Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician and on today's video we are going to be attempting to rebuild the lower engine harness. The harness goes from the starter and then up through the bottom to uh, the control modules right there on the passenger side um, uh, but right by the bottom of the windshield and uh, hopefully we can get it all rebuilt and get it functioning properly and we'll go through using the um, the wire set, or not the wire set, the electrical testing set and the meter and the um, soldering soldering gun right here to try to get everything working properly because that lower engine harness is no longer available. But before we do that, make sure you give me the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit the alert button so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Alrighty, here we are. So, here is the lower engine harness, like I said, no longer available. The upper one, uh, there might be one or two left in the country, but I think they're going to be about 600 bucks a piece. The, we're going to have to take the starter off uh, so we can um, have access to the, um, the contact right here, the, the lug that goes to the starter solenoid, and we're going to have to take this off. And what we're going to use, soldering gun with the deflector attachment, because we have solder connectors right there. And this is a Mercedes one. These are all non-Mercedes solder connectors. So um, these solder connectors right here, the Mercedes one, is about 20 bucks a piece. And if I use Mercedes ones, um, I'd be using about $160 worth of solder connectors on this, probably more. So um, we're going to take apart, maybe not this one because this one doesn't come apart, but we're going to have to take apart this and get to each one of these pins right there. We're going to try to save this sheath because it's nice and clean it's got machine's part number on it we're gonna have to cut this off so we can access all the wires in there because it's a bit snug on there so we won't be able to pull those out and we're gonna need some heat shrink and some harness tape all right you can see right here where these early wiring harnesses they just crumble and the insulation just falls apart you can see right there all those wires so after after a while they crumble apart and they start making contact with each other and things stop working so that's what one of the things we're going to fix and now we got to get the starter detached from the harness so we got to take out this phillips right here then we got to take out this 13 millimeter nut right there So when I put this back together, I'm not going to be using loom like this right here because you can see after a while it just crumbles and turns into a pile of dust. So I'll be using harness tape when I put this back together. I think I'm going to leave these bits of uh, sheathing right there because this is the only cable that's in there. It goes from the, uh, um, from the starter 
to the other end of the harness right here. So um, take all the, you only got four wires to go down this thing. So let's get to replacing those. Here is the donor harness. This is the harness out of a uh, 112 engine. Uh, the lower engine harness, you can see part of the uh, tube right here that mounts to the uh, bell housing, I believe. And then this goes to uh, the starter. So, uh, but I'm not going to use this giant starter cable because um, it, uh, I don't need to replace that one because the sheathing and the insulation on the outside looks okay. So I'm going to leave that as it is. So when you're doing wiring, one thing you want to remember is, that, especially if you're replacing wiring, you can always go bigger on your wire size. You don't want to go smaller on your wire size. So um, if you see these wires right here are fairly small gauge, these wires right here are fairly large gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wires out of this connector right here, which looks to be, uh, the length should be fairly sufficient uh, for placing these. And looks like that comes all the way down. Looks like I got a good five-ish feet, um, which is uh, should be more than I need. Okay, next step we got to get this connector taken apart because we have to remove each one of these pins individually because we have about four wires to replace. And the big one I'm going to go ahead and take a wag at. It's going to be the big pin. So we're going to do this one at a time. Um, if you don't have a wiring diagram, that's how probably how you want to do it, one at a time. Um, so just so you can get each one in and out in the right spot. So you can see the big one is pin one, and then we'll figure out which other wire goes to which other pin. And you want to be careful, they're not like the new connectors on that 112 engine. Uh, once you take this cover off, these will pretty much just come right out. So um, be careful and try not to remove each one of the, or try to remove them all at the same time um, without knowing which wire goes to which pin, because it'll be really difficult trying to get them back in. It'll be hard to get them in the right spot, that is. So one thing you gotta also pay attention to is each one of these wires has to come in here and has a little opening in uh, where the pin goes in the top here. So if you're gonna try to repair these because these pins aren't available separate from the harness um, and these pins you can see right here, it's not exactly crimped on and you can't really replace it. So one thing you gotta uh, pay attention to is the uh, little bit of space that you have in here. So if you try to throw on a solder connector, 
inside this, uh, you're going to run out of space real quick and you're not going to close this back up properly. So uh, what I'm going to do, even though it's going to take up some space and I, I might even run into the same uh, issue, is I'm going to put in some uh, shrink tube around these uh, the wires right here to keep the wires from making contact inside the connector housing and hopefully I'll have enough room uh, in here to be able to close this properly. So we're going to start one pin at a time. I am going to start with the big pin. Then just keep these in place. I'm going to click that back closed. So then they can't come out. So I'm going to leave myself enough space to put some shrink tube on here. Just so I can get that pin, get that out of here. And then I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put, when I get the new wire, push through this sheath right here. Then I'm going to uh, solder connector it. And then... Um, put the shrink tube, shrink down the tube over uh, the solder connector. Remember, you can always cut off more, you can never cut off less. Now you can see when it's in there, it's not going to be making, the wires itself aren't going to be making contact with any of the other ones. Now we need to take off this bit right here and see what we have to work with. And I don't have any of these crimp connectors, but I can do the same thing to this end that I'm doing to the other end. Okay, so now that I found a wire that's long enough, and that's a sufficient size. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and solder these two together with a solder connector. And then what I like to do is I just like to keep the wires straight and then mesh them together. So um, they basically just go like this. They basically go like that together. And then when the solder melts, it'll get soldered together. I don't really twist them or do anything. I mean, you can if you want, if you can get it to fit in the solder connector, but um, when soldering normally, yeah, I'll use a different type of um, uh, technique when joining the wires together before putting the solder on it. But a solder connector, I just mesh them straight together. And then also you want to make sure that your solder ring right here is completely melted all the way around. And now that it's cooled, you can see that it's, if my phone will focus, you can see that it's cinched down around there, shrink down around there, shrink down around there, and it's on there really well. So, not perfect, but it'll work. One thing you also got to think about when putting on solder connectors is you don't want to put these things near bends. So if you have to have a curved spot in your wire, you don't want to put the solder connector on the curve. So you don't want this to be right here. And since this 
is the wire that goes to the starter solenoid, then you have to make sure that we're not going to bend or try to bend that solder connector. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test our repair. So we're going to hook uh, positive and negative up to each end, and we're going to check the resistance on it. Black goes in the common, or doesn't really matter, but common is usually ground. And we're going to connect that right there. And then the red wire goes in the positive, and then we have a pin or the, the female pin for that pin. So that fits just like that. And now we're gonna check the resistance. Perfect. Very, very low resistance uh, between 0.1 and uh, a tenth and two tenths of an ohm between on that, on that wire from there through the solder, through two solder connectors and back out the other side. So that's good. So I'm going to go through and do all these. Uh, you guys don't need to see me do that three more times. So I'm going to go through and then uh, get all these repinned or get these reconnected just like that. And then I'll come back to you in a bit. Alrighty, there you go. Now you can see that none of the wires are touching and they have the heat chink around there and they got all the solder connectors right there. Normally, you would not want to keep all the solder connectors in one point like that, make a little rat's nest of solder connectors. Uh, but the uh, I didn't have much choice with uh, the amount of wire that I was going to have left over on these right here with the shrink tube or the yeah the shrink tubing that I had. So I went ahead and uh, brand new wires. I actually was able to find wires that were very similar in color, except for I think this red one right here. I think the red one was uh, <clears throat> not red. It was something else. I forget what it was. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was white. But this blue wire, it was a blue wire, this black wire is a black wire, and this green wire was a green wire, and the blue, yeah. So all three of those were the same color, and this one was a thick white wire. But this one was the power to the solenoid, so um, red will keep that, still keep that not confusing. So, um, so I'm going to put some tape around this, and then I'll shut that up, and uh, I'm going to wrap this as well. And I'll probably uh, wrap this, um, at least some tape around one end of this, uh, both ends of this, just to keep it in place. And then we'll get to wrapping up all this now that it's not attached to the main harness anymore. Alrighty, there we are. Got a little tape happy with it, but went through, tested all these with the uh, ohm meter, and make sure I got uh, good continuity between all the opposite points of all these connections here. So I guess uh, that's it for this video. Next video we'll get to uh, um, putting it on, possibly putting the upper harness on as well. Maybe. Don't hold me to it because you know things always change. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Give me that thumbs up and hit the notification icon so you get notifications when I post a new video. See you next time.